When I was a young boy, I lived in Eufaula, Alabama, a small town with a population just over 500. With small towns come community. That means that everybody in my neighborhood knew each other. We had grown up together, our parents had grown up together, and our grandparents had grown up together. Your high school sweetheart was most likely going to be your wife. It's just the way things were in Eufaula. Everyone's houses had white picket fences and long fields in the back. Our parents were farmers who mostly grew wheat and corn. Very, very few people ever left the town, let alone their neighborhood. This was also before the rise of the internet. So as you can imagine, nobody knew much besides what came out of old textbooks and the Holy Word of God. It was a 30-minute bus ride to school every morning. None of our friends' houses were more than a 10-minute bike ride away, which was nice. We may have been hicks, but it was all we ever knew. In 1974, when I was seven years old, something happened in Eufaula that was unusual. We had a new family move in. I first saw them when I was biking to my friend George's house on a Saturday morning so we could watch cartoons together. His house had a television set, unlike mine. My parents preferred to listen to radio. Anything that needs to be heard can be heard over radio, they would say when I asked for a television set. Then they'd dismiss it. So of course I went to George's house every Saturday to watch the cartoons. Anyways, I rode by the house of a lady who had just died, and noticed a station wagon was parked in the driveway. There were boxes all over the ground. I parked my bike and knocked on the door. I heard shuffling inside. Something fell over, and I heard the bolts shift. The door slowly creaked open to show the face of a young girl with huge eyes. I could tell she was around my age. In the background, I could see empty beer bottles and a man lying down on the couch. Hello, I said. She said nothing, and just stared at me with those big, beautiful eyes. My name is Charlie, and I live down the street. I was just dropping by to say hello. You guys are new around here. We don't get many new people. She started to respond, but the man on the couch shuffled and sat up drunkenly. She flashed me a sad smile and closed the door. I stood dumbfounded at the door and started to walk away when I heard a voice inside. Curiosity got the better of me and I stood by the door to hear. A man's voice slurred and asked who was at the door. A small girl's voice said, Nobody, just the wind. The man raised his drunken voice and exclaimed, You filthy liar! And I heard a loud, gut-wrenching sound of a fist striking a young child, and the young child falling to the floor. I figured that was my sign to leave. I spent the rest of the day at George's, thinking about the pretty girl. Every Sunday, every man, woman, and child gathered in our tiny chapel for Mass. I absolutely despised Mass. Even as a young child, I knew it was pointless, not to mention boring. The only reason I didn't put up a fight was because I saw my friends during faith formation there every Sunday. At my church, Everyone arrived three hours before the actual Mass, and split into groups of adults and children to do separate things. The other boys and I would just goof off the whole time. The girls would actually pay attention. That day was the first day I saw her in public. She was wearing sunglasses. I thought it was strange. Even when asked, she refused to take them off. After Mass, I approached her. Hello, I said. Remember me? She nodded. What's your name? I asked. Caroline, she said softly. Why are you wearing sunglasses, Caroline? She paused a second, then reached up to remove them. One of her eyes was bruised and swollen. It looked painful. My daddy gets angry when he's drunk, she said sadly. Even at a young age, I understood what was going on. Would you like to have dinner at my house tonight, Caroline? 
I asked. She nodded and smiled shyly. After that, Caroline and I became best of friends. After school every day, I would wait for her to get out. Then we would walk to the forest across from our school and play until dark. Sometimes she would eat dinner at my house, and sometimes she would sleep over. She was always glad to spend time away from her broken household. As we got older, we played less and less, and talked more and more. We talked about why she had bruises every day. We knew everything there was to know about each other. She told me her dad had beat her and her mom for as long as she could remember. She told me he did other things to her, inappropriate things, and that she resented him for it. I didn't blame her. On my 14th birthday, she kissed me for the first time, and shortly after that, we began dating. And on my 16th birthday, she gave me the most important thing a woman can give a man. We were in love, deep love. One day after school, we were sitting in the woods when she asked me if I believed in magic. I pondered her question for a minute and responded, I think that magic is real, but it's incredibly hard to find. She said nothing and looked up at my face. She took my hand and without questioning, I followed. She took me across the woods to a clearing. In the center of the clearing was a well that looked like it was older than our town was. Caroline looked at me inquisitively. So? This well is definitely magic, I said, smirking at her. It's clearly a wishing well. She looked excited. It was so cute I couldn't help smiling along with her. Let's try it out, I said. And I threw a stick down. Oh, magical wishing well. I wish that you let us skip class tomorrow. I giggled. I swear I heard a voice say, Granted. But since Caroline didn't hear, or at least pay attention to it, I thought nothing of it. She held my hand and we walked back to our houses, laughing the whole way. The next day I arrived at school, only to see that it had been burnt down. Apparently there had been a mishap in the kitchen. I searched for Caroline in the crowd and eventually saw her big, beautiful eyes. Do you know what this means? She whispered. We found a real wishing well. Of course, we returned there every day after school, sometimes wishing for sweets or wishing for puppies. When I wished for a TV, the next day my parents had decided I was old enough for one in my room. Needless to say, we were very happy. One day, Caroline didn't show up to school. I was worried sick for her. I biked to her house only to find she wasn't home. Instead, there was a note attached to the front door that said, Meet me by the well. I biked as fast as I could to the well and saw her collapsed on the ground, bawling her eyes out. I held her until she stopped crying. I stroked her hair and held her hand until she was okay. He... he killed her, she whimpered, and looked up at me with big eyes full of fury. He, he killed her, and now I'm going to kill him. I didn't stop her as she slowly stood up and approached the well. I wish my father was dead, she said monotonously. Silence. I was approaching her when I heard a voice in the wind say, Granted. She collapsed into my arms, and we sat like that, me holding her, her crying into me. It was probably around midnight when we finally left. I offered her to stay over at my house that night, but she declined. I offered to walk her home, but she declined. Good night, Charlie, she said. Good night, Caroline, I said, and we went our separate ways. That morning was Saturday. I biked over to her house as soon as the sun came up. I didn't even knock. I let myself into her house and found her sitting crisscross on the carpet. Her father was laying next to her, not breathing. I approached her and sat by her. 
Neither of us said anything. I looked at her, the woman I fell in love with. She was broken. Both her parents had died in less than 48 hours. I loved her so much. It hurt me to see her like this. As if she knew what I was thinking, she said, I'll be fine. I have to go do something. Please don't follow me. I let her go, and she never came back. The grief pushed me out of that small town, and I moved to a bigger city. I met another woman. She was no Caroline, though. I loved her more than anyone else. The reason I'm writing this is because my mother passed away yesterday, and I came to visit my hometown for the funeral. While I was there, I decided to visit the old well for old time's sake. I tossed a stick in and said, I wish I knew where Caroline was. Granted, came a woman's voice from behind me.